Modern Times Vedic Perspective Chapter 9 On Seeing God This discussion between His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and a reporter took place at ISKCON Center in Melbourne, Australia. Interviewer Your Divine Grace is the purpose of human life to realize God? Srila Prabhupada Yes, that is the only purpose. Interviewer Srila Prabhupada Have you realized God? Srila Prabhupada What do you think? What is your opinion? Interviewer I can't say. Srila Prabhupada Then, if I say yes, what will you have understood? If you are not expert, then even if I say yes, I am God-realized, how will you take it? If you do not know what God-realization is, then how can you ask this question and how will you be satisfied by the answer? Therefore, you should not ask this question. It has no value unless, of course, you are prepared to accept whatever answer I give. Are you prepared? Interviewer Yes. Srila Prabhupada Then it is all right. I am seeing God every moment. But unless you are prepared to take the answer, you should not ask such questions. Interviewer Your divine grace? Is meditation a means to realize God? Srila Prabhupada Yes, meditation is one means. But you cannot meditate now because you do not know what God is. So how will you meditate? If you do not know what God is, upon whom will you meditate? First of all, you must know. We know God, Krishna. And Krishna says, Man mana bhava mad bhakta. Always think of me. So we meditate upon Krishna. That is perfect meditation. Because meditation means to think of God. But if you do not know what God is, how can you think of Him? Interviewer It is written in many scriptures that God is light. Srila Prabhupada God is everything. God is darkness also. We say that God is that person from whom everything comes. So light comes from God and darkness also comes from God. Interviewer Do you think that meditation is a way to see God inside yourself? Srila Prabhupada Yes, that is the description of meditation. Dhyana pashtitha tad gatena manasa pashyanti yam yoginaha By concentrating his mind, the yogi tries to see God within. So, you must know what God is. Consider our ISKCON institution, for example. My disciples know what God is, so they can think of God. But if you have no idea of God, how will you think of Him? Interviewer This path of devotional yoga, bhakti yoga, is this the path for the present age? Srila Prabhupada Yes, bhakti yoga is the real yoga. You will find that when the yoga system is described in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, The first class yogi is he who is always thinking of me, Krishna, within himself. So our students are being taught to think of Krishna always, 24 hours a day without stopping. That is first class yoga. Interviewer if you are to think about something, you first have to see it. Do you show your devotees Krishna? Srila Prabhupada Oh yes, certainly. Interviewer Then what? Well, what is Krishna? What does he look like? Srila Prabhupada See, here is Krishna. Interviewer But that's a painting. Srila Prabhupada Yes, it is a painting, but suppose a painting of you were there, could I not say, here is Mr. Such and Such? Interviewer, yes. Srila Prabhupada, then what is the wrong there? Is your picture not yourself? 
interviewer yes it is shila prabhupada similarly this is krishna's painting but the difference is that we cannot talk with your picture but we can talk with krishna's picture that is the difference interviewer but still somebody must have seen krishna to actually paint him shila prabhupada yes when krishna was present on this earth so many people saw him and since then there have been so many temples of krishna's deity krishna's form the same form described in the vedic literature appeared personally and the devotees made statues these forms of krishna are being worshiped regularly there are thousands and thousands of krishna temples interviewer but has anybody actually seen krishna shrila prabhupada yes yes just as your father has seen your grandfather you may not have seen him but your father can describe him my father was like this what is the difficulty devotee he asked if anyone now has seen krishna shrila prabhupada how can one see him now one has to see through the parampara the disciplic succession you have not seen your grandfather so how do you know who he was interviewer your parents tell you shrila prabhupada yes so you have to receive knowledge about god from the authorities from the parampara interviewer but supposedly krishna is eternal so surely he exists today shrila prabhupada yes krishna is existing at night the sun is existing but you have no eyes to see it that does not mean the sun does not exist it is your deficiency you cannot see interviewer so we need divine sight shrila prabhupada you require qualification krishna is always existing but you require the qualification to see him that is described in the vedic scriptures premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena santas sadaiva hridayeshu vilokayanti those who are saintly persons in ecstatic love with krishna can see him always 24 hours a day that is not very difficult to understand if you love someone you see him always is it not so you need the qualification of love then krishna will be visible 24 hours a day and talk with you so you have to qualify yourself to hear krishna to see krishna but krishna is always present modern times vedic perspective chapter 10 on the united nations this conversation between his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupada and mr p sharma a former united nations worker took place in paris shila prabhupada suppose i ask the united nations as an organization to explain the purpose of this cosmic manifestation i am created a man another is created an elephant and another is created an ant why is this the sun is rising on time the moon is rising on time seasons are changing what is the purpose behind all this mr sharma i think the united nations would be at a loss to tell you shila prabhupada so people have become very dull in spite of their so called education mr sharma oh yes education today is merely book knowledge shila prabhupada such so called knowledge is described in the shrimad bhagavatam as simply a waste of time although a person may execute his duties perfectly if he doesn't understand the purpose of creation if he doesn't awaken his krishna consciousness then whatever he has done is simply a waste of time so our point is that the united nations is only wasting time 
even from the practical point of view they are unable to accomplish anything the original idea was to stop war but there have been so many wars and they cannot stop them they call themselves the united nations but actually they are becoming disunited more and more according to the bhagavad gita if they actually want peace they must know that lord krishna the supreme personality of godhead is the supreme enjoyer bhokta that he is the supreme proprietor sarva loka maheshwaram and that he is the friend of everyone suridam sarva bhutanam when they know this krishna says then there will be peace otherwise their big conferences in big offices will never be successful mr sharma that means everything belongs to god that's the one fact they want to avoid shila prabhupada yes that is their nonsense the united nations is simply an association of the cheaters and the cheated someone wants to cheat and someone is being cheated that is our opinion so how can an association of cheaters and cheated do any good for human society they are cheaters they do not know how to attain peace but they are trying for peace in their own way therefore they are cheaters mr sharma well many people will say that the only things that matter are those that can be rationally explained anything that is beyond reason shila prabhupada but our argument is quite reasonable everything in this room is created is it not mr sharma yes shila prabhupada the table is created the light is created everything is created by someone so how can you deny the fact that someone has created the whole universe if you say it has come about automatically that is rascaldom someone has created it but who is that someone we are not the creators not the americans not the englishmen so we can understand that someone else has created this world and then we have to ask who is the proprietor shall i be the proprietor or shall the creator be the proprietor mr sharma the creator of course shila prabhupada so why are they claiming this is my country mr sharma are you saying that the united states for instance does not belong to the americans shila prabhupada yes it doesn't belong to them yet these rascals are claiming this is mine this is my flag therefore they are all cheaters and they are combining and trying to cheat others the americans are thinking how can i cheat the russians and the russians are thinking how can i cheat the americans is that civilization to become cheaters and waste time in so called conferences is that civilization mr sharma no not at all shila prabhupada in america they cheated the red indians they got the land and now they are claiming it is mine well where did you get this land you cheated the red indians and you claim it is your land all over the world this is going on napoleon thought france is mine so france is there but where is napoleon where is he living now in france or in hell or in heaven there are so many places and so many forms of life in this body in this life i may be working as a nationalist as a napoleon or as a gandhi or as someone fighting in the united nations but as soon as this body is finished i'll get another body so the whole duration of my previous life is simply wasted mr sharma i see shila prabhupada simply wasted they are simply wasting time they don't have perfect knowledge simply some utopian ideas and they are passing as advanced in civilization 
they should know what the purpose of life is what our relationship is with this cosmic manifestation there must be a creator so who is that creator what is my relationship with him but they are neglecting all these things and still passing as world leaders mr sharma that's the worst kind of government it seems that their standard is just as you have said every nation for itself jila prabhupada but a human being can get out of this illusion there is sufficient knowledge especially in the vedic literature so why don't they take advantage of this knowledge and make their lives successful that is my proposal we are spreading this krishna consciousness movement only for this purpose these people are missing the point and unnecessarily wasting their lives in illusion so we are trying to save them that is our krishna consciousness movement modern times vedic perspective chapter 11 back to the simple life and simple truth this conversation between his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupada and some of his disciples took place at iskon's farming village in new vrindavan west virginia on june 24 1976 disciple shila prabhupada once you said the tractor this is the cause of all the trouble it took all the young men's farm work it forced them to go into the city and become entangled in sensuality you said people had to leave the country and the simple life of goodness and god consciousness and so they went to the city and got caught up in the anxious life the mode of passion shila prabhupada yes in the city people must naturally fall into the mode of passion constant anxiety due to needless lusting and striving in the city we are surrounded by all sorts of artificial things for agitating our mind and senses and naturally when we have this facility we become lusty we take to this passionate mode and become filled with anxiety disciple the country is more peaceful it's easier to think of spiritual life shila prabhupada yes there is less disease everything is less brain taxing in the country the pangs of this material world are less so you can arrange your life for real profit spiritual profit realize god become krishna conscious and if you have got a temple in your home or near your home you have a very happy life you work just a little just for your food in the spring a month and a half or so for planting in the fall a month and a half for harvesting and in your remaining time you become culturally enriched you engage all your talents and energies for realizing god krishna consciousness this is ideal life you see the minute fibers on this flower no other manufacturing process in this world can do this such small fibers and how brilliant is the color if you study only one flower you will become god conscious there is a mechanism that we call nature and from it is coming everything we see around us now how is it that this mechanism is so perfect and who is it that has devised this mechanism disciple once in london you said people do not know that flowers are painted krishna paints them with thoughts shila prabhupada yes most people think that by itself unconnected with a painter this flower has become beautiful this is foolishness nature has done it whose nature everything is being done by the natural mechanism of krishna parasya shakti vividhaiva shuyate the lord is orchestrating everything by his innumerable inconceivable energies anyway learn to love this natural mode of life life in a wide open space produce your own grain 
produce your own milk save time chant hare krishna glorify the lord's holy names at life's end go back to the spiritual world to live forever plain living high thinking ideal life modern artificial necessities of life may seem to increase your so called comfort but if you forget life's real aim that is suicidal we want to stop the suicidal policy we don't directly attempt to stop the modern advancement of technology the so called advancement of technology is suicidal but we don't always talk of this people today are extremely attached to the so called advancement therefore when lord chaitanya appeared 500 years ago he gave a simple formula chant hare krishna even in your technological factory you can chant you go on pushing and pulling with your machine and chant hare krishna hare krishna you can devote yourself to god what is the wrong there disciple the leaders know that once a person starts chanting god's names in time he loses taste for this anxious life of technology shrila prabhupada that is natural disciple so the leaders know you are sowing the seeds of their destruction shrila prabhupada where is the destruction rather it is construction devote yourself to god and live forever this is the proper path follow it you will live forever by our method tyaktva deham punar janma naiti after leaving your present material body you don't get any more material bodies you regain your spiritual body and go back to the spiritual world and without the spiritual realization tata dehantara prapti hi when you leave your present material body you'll have to accept another material body so consider the two methods of living which is better the advanced method accepting more material bodies or our old fashioned method accepting no more material bodies which is better as soon as you accept a material body you have to suffer birth old age disease death the material body means suffering therefore if we prepare so that on leaving this present body we undergo no more suffering that is intelligent but if we prepare to receive another material body for more suffering is that intelligent unless you understand the lord unless you understand krishna you'll have to stay in this material world and accept another body there is no alternative now our method we understand first that nahanyate anyamane sharire when the body is finished the soul goes on living unfortunately many people have become so dull brain that they cannot understand the simple truth every day of their lives people see that a soul in an infant body is going to take on a childhood body then a teenage body next an adult body and later an aged body people see with their own eyes how the soul is transmigrating from one body to another body to still another body nevertheless with their dull brains they cannot understand that at death when the aged body is finished the soul goes on to yet another body material or spiritual but people cannot understand this they are so dull brained they cannot make the simple distinction between the body and the soul it will take 500 years to teach them the simple truth their education is so advanced modern times vedic perspectives chapter 12 nobel prizes for fools the following conversation between his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupada and some of his disciples took place in june 1974 during an early morning walk in geneva shrila prabhupada all the big leaders in the world are foolishly thinking they are independent they are just like the dog 
who forgets that he is controlled by his master. The dog doesn't know he is controlled. He is thinking, I am now free. Row, row, row. But then, with a little pull of the chain, the master stops all this nonsense. Devotee, especially in the western countries, Srila Prabhupada, people don't like to think they are controlled. Srila Prabhupada, therefore, they are rascals. Krishna directly says, Ahankara vimudhatma kartaham iti manyate. The fools and rascals think, I am doing everything. One is controlled at every step, yet he is thinking, I am doing everything. Therefore, he is a rascal. In spite of his big, big house, his nice road and good car, he is a rascal. He thinks he is independent, that he will not die. But as soon as Maya, the material energy, kicks on his face, he must die. Immediately. He may protest, I have still got some business to do. But Maya says, no, no, sir, you must die immediately. And he thinks he is not controlled. What is this nonsense? So, real knowledge is to understand, in spite of all my so-called advancement of civilization, I am controlled. That is the beginning of knowledge. Then, we should think how to get out of this control. But if we think, I am not controlled, then we are no better than the cats and dogs. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Prakriti Kriya Manani By Prakriti, by the material nature, one is pulled by the ear. Come here. Yes, sir. Come here. Yes, sir. As soon as you eat a little more than you require, Maya says, you must fast for three days. And you are not controlled? Just see how foolish these people are and they are getting the Nobel Prize. Devotee No one has ever gotten the Nobel Prize for saying, yes, we are all controlled. Srila Prabhupada This is because the men who are awarding the Nobel Prize are also rascals. It is a society of fools and rascals. Therefore, my Guru Maharaja, spiritual master, used to say, This is a society of the cheaters and the cheated. Devotee, I have prepared an argument this morning. Srila Prabhupada, what is that? Devotee, the psychologists have a theory that people are conditioned by their environment, their upbringing, their parents and teachers and so on and that because of this conditioning they act and think in a certain way. So the psychologists argue that Krishna consciousness is just another kind of conditioning that when you live in a Hare Krishna temple you leave one kind of conditioning but you enter another kind of conditioning. Srila Prabhupada Yes we agree that Krishna Consciousness is conditioning, certainly. Your position is that you must be conditioned. If you become conditioned by God, that is your perfection. And if you become conditioned by Maya, that is your trouble. But in either case, you must be conditioned. You cannot be independent. Unfortunately, you are thinking you are independent. That is your rascaldom. You should always think, I must be conditioned. That is my constitutional position in life. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Mahatmanas tu maam partha daivim prakritim ashritaha. The great souls, the Mahatmas, are under my spiritual nature. So the devotees are still conditioned. They are under Krishna's spiritual nature, Daivi Prakriti. First of all, we must understand that our natural position is to be conditioned. Now, by whom shall we be conditioned? Krishna says, Sarva Dharman Parityajya Maam Ekam Sharanam Vraja Become conditioned by me. Surrender to me. Then you will be happy. Those who are thinking, 
we shall not be conditioned are in maya illusion the vedas say nityo nityanam chetanas chetana nam eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman among all the eternal living beings one is supplying all the rest with their necessities of life so god is supplying us with the necessities of life therefore we should recognize that we are living under his control and serve him suppose you are giving me all my necessities of life shouldn't i reciprocate by rendering some service to you no one can be independent it is not possible these rascals are putting forward a wrong philosophy this idea of complete independence we are simply becoming more and more conditioned by krishna's external material energy devotee their idea is that since our problems come from the wrong kind of conditioning during childhood we should be given the opportunity in childhood of a good family a good education and so on and in that way there won't be a bad reaction later on in life shila prabhupada that means a child should be given the chance for better conditioning but conditioning must go on if they say let the child be given freedom they are fools devotee they say that the child can have freedom when he receives good conditioning shila prabhupada bad conditioning or good conditioning where is the freedom instead of bad conditioning they are suggesting good conditioning but that is not freedom suppose you are in the prison house you are heavily conditioned but even when you are released and get your so called freedom you are still controlled by the laws of the state you are not free you have simply gone from bad conditioning to good conditioning and if you obey the state laws then you are a good citizen and can live peacefully but you are still controlled how can you think you are free that is foolishness devotee so in other words your idea is to give people a better conditioning shila prabhupada no not a better conditioning the best conditioning the best conditioning is to be under the control of krishna that is the first class way of life and that is the only way to get free of the control of the material energy <laughs>